What's up, everyone? Welcome to the first episode of Kelvin's Garage. And what better way to have our first episode than to do the most basic and most important maintenance item for your vehicle? And that is the oil change. So today we're gonna do an oil change on my 2006 Honda Civic. What a beauty. Now this car is a little bit old and I've probably changed the oil on it dozens of times. But if you do that, these good old Hondas can last virtually forever. So you get in your car, you turn on the ignition, and the first thing you notice is you've got the maintenance light on as well as some codes here shown on the instrument cluster. Now the codes A134 we'll get to a little bit later but we can see here that instead of showing the odometer, the service oil life light is turned on and it also shows five, meaning there's only 5% left on this uh, oil change life cycle. So today we're going to change the oil and show you how it's done. It's very simple and can be done by anybody at home. Okay, so one of the first things you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the engine is nice and warm. So drive it around a little bit and we can see here that uh, we have a warm engine. Uh, the temperature is somewhere in the middle of the uh, indicator between C and H, uh, which means that the car is warmed up to normal operating temperature. Another way you can tell is uh, when it sits around this uh, normal operating temperature between the C and the H uh, and you're just parked, the engine will occasionally turn on the, the fan, the radiator fan. So that will kind of turn on, uh, run for just a little bit in a burst, and then turn off. Alright, here are the items that you're going to need in order to properly do this oil change. You're going to need a 17 millimeter wrench, Okay, some gloves. Okay, I've already got one on, but uh, showing you here that we definitely want to use some vinyl or nitrile gloves to protect our hands. Okay, we're going to possibly need an oil filter wrench. Now, this particular oil filter wrench is uh, of the strap type, and basically what this does is it allows us to get a good grip on the oil filter, uh, which can be uh, locked on there fairly tightly. Okay, we may or may not need this, and it depends on the oil filter that you already have on the vehicle. Uh, we also need an oil drain pan, okay, one just like this, and a jack. Okay, here I have a two-ton uh, portable jack. It's a pretty compact one, but it will suit our needs. Now, a wrench set at Harbor Freight is pretty cheap. Probably get one for just a few dollars. Uh, you're going to be using the metric wrench set okay 17 millimeter is the drain bolt um the the size of the drain bolt okay uh that's probably a few dollars box of gloves you can get virtually anywhere oil filter wrench probably less than five dollars walmart or something this is probably five dollars at walmart and a jack like this uh i think you can get them for maybe 20 or 25 dollars okay also for the purposes of cleanliness, you can see I've got this nice piece of cardboard. Okay, this piece of cardboard is what I use to slip under the car in case any oil spills out. Okay, and after the oil has been drained into this pan, I put it away into a plastic container such as this. Okay, this oil container will be used to hold our uh, expended oil, our used up oil. Uh, so that we can haul it away for recycling. Uh, also handy will be a funnel, okay, which will allow us to pour the new oil into the car. In terms of oil, I like to use Mobile One Full Synthetic. Okay, the one I have here is Mobile One High Mileage Protection for engines with over 75,000 miles. And for the 2006 Honda Civic, please check your own manufacturer. But for my vehicle, it's 5W20. Okay, so this five quart uh, uh, container is probably suitable for our needs. And we'll probably have just a little bit left over after we're done changing the oil. Okay, on top of that, I use a oil filter, K&N. 
Yeah, this K&N oil filter is model number HP1010 and it's probably one of the best oil filters you can buy. Now this mobile one five quart container uh, at Walmart probably costs around $26 or $27 and uh, this Canon oil filter at Walmart also costs around $10. Uh, as you notice, as you can see, I like to use pretty high quality materials here. I use a very high quality oil filter, very high quality oil. Um, it will pay dividends in the long run. So try not to skimp out on your oil. If you take a look at this K&N oil filter, you know, it's got like a little sticker here that you can use to tell yourself when the next time you need to change your oil is. You probably won't need it for a Civic because the Civic has the little counter inside that will count the miles for you and tell you when your last oil change is uh, close to being used up. Again, here's the oil filter, K&N HP 1010, uh, made in the USA, so this is high quality stuff. There's the gasket, and uh, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is jack up my vehicle. Now, for oil changes, I like to jack it up in two places actually, and I'll show you why in just a second. First, I'm going to jack up the vehicle on this side over here, right under the driver's side um, door, okay? Okay, stick our jack right under that spot here. Make sure the release valve is fully tightened. Okay, and just by hand, jack this up so it fits right in the right spot. So I'm gonna do that like this. There it goes, it fits right under those notches. Okay, and then I will jack it up the rest of the way. Now it doesn't need to be jacked up way into the sky, okay? So just enough so that there is clearance under the vehicle that I can get under there. Now this oil change is not a major job, so we're not going to be spending extensive amounts of time under the car, okay? So try not to jack it up higher than what you need to jack it up to be to reach your arm under. Okay, I'd say that's good enough. Okay, and then put this bar aside. We don't want to trip on it by accident. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack it up on a second point here. Now the reason why I do this is just for extra security. Okay, this jack is not actually going to be exerting much force on the jack point here but i've got a second jack if you have one you could do this okay i'm going to jack it up right here on this tow hook and only just slightly so that it alleviates some of the pressure from that jack over there which is the main support for this okay so i'm just going to jack it up very slightly right here so with our second jack make sure the release valve is tight Okay, hand pump this so that it fits in the right place where the tow hook is. Something like this. Okay, something like this. Okay. And then just very gently just jack it up a little bit. Just like so. Okay, that's good. Enough. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this cardboard under my vehicle and cardboard you know if you order a lot of stuff from Amazon or bought a TV you probably have a lot of cardboard around it's the best material for absorbing any kind of uh, droplets or uh, you know preventing an oil spill from forming under your car on the driveway so I'm just gonna slip this cardboard under there okay and if we take a look under the vehicle we can kind of see exactly where the oil drip pan is going to be positioned. Okay, you take a look here. Okay, we've got the oil drain bolt, which is right over here. Okay, so that's the oil drain bolt. Okay, and here goes our oil drain pan. Okay, I'm just going to get it right under just about where that drain bolt is. So you can take a look here. There's the drain bolt. There's a drain pan. But before we undo the drain bolt, on top I'm going to open the oil fill cap. Now by opening the oil fill cap, that will allow air to displace the oil when I drain it out of the engine. 
so it'll come out much faster. Okay, now let's open up the hood. Pull on the hood latch here. Here's the hood support right there. Okay, so here's our engine bay, and here is the oil fill cap. Okay, so we're going to open the oil fill cap to allow for air to flow into the engine uh, where the oil will be displaced when drained down below. Now, if you're having a hard time undoing the cap, um, this is very common because what happens is that over time the engine heats up and cools down and the rubber seal on the oil cap starts sealing up really tight against the head of the engine. And so what you can do is, the trick I like to use is take a mallet to this oil drain fill cap and that will allow me to loosen it very easily. We've got our little mallet so we'll just give it a few hits here to loosen the oil fill cap. Okay, and that's it. It is spinning freely. Okay, and here we'll just set this aside right here so we don't forget about it. One of the things I forgot to mention is the importance of paper towels. Okay, if you work on your car a lot, you're going to be using a lot of these. I know some people use rags, some people use those blue shop paper towels. I just use good old paper towels because you use them around the house anyway. You're gonna need a lot of these. Keep the paper towels handy when you're under the vehicle, just in case you have some unforeseen splashes or spills and you can wipe it up fairly quickly. Okay, so now we're going to reach under and we're going to undo that drain bolt and let the oil fall into the pan. Okay, so with our 17 millimeter wrench, okay, I'm gonna go over the drain bolt. Now, remember which direction to turn this and don't turn it the wrong way. Okay, when looking at the bolt, it should be counterclockwise, but I'm actually not looking at the bolt. I'm looking at the bolt from the other direction. So I should be turning this clockwise, okay? So what I can do is I can keep the pan relatively close to the drain bolt, and then with the wrench, just turn it clockwise, okay? Now again, if we're having issues with mechanical leverage, what we can do is we can just have the wrench uh, against the bolt, okay, around the bolt, and I can grab my mallet, which will make this much, much easier. Okay, so I've got my little mallet here. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna knock it once, okay, and that should break open the bolt. Uh, the wrench might fall down, but don't worry about that part. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that was it. The drain bolt has now been broken loose. Okay, and but and if you notice, once the drain bolt has been broken loose, oil doesn't immediately start coming out of the engine. Okay, you actually have some control over that. All right, so I, what I would say is grab some paper towels, because what's going to happen is I'm going to undo the drain bolt, let the oil come out, and then immediately I'm going to take the drain bolt and the washer around the drain bolt, and I'm going to wrap it in a paper towel to keep everything nice and clean. Okay, the oil is going to be relatively hot because we warmed up the engine to get the old oil to flow well, okay, and collect all the dirt along with it. But the caveat is that it will be hot when it comes out. Okay, notice that when I turn the drain bolt, I actually put pressure with my finger on the drain bolt. And what that does is it will keep the oil from seeping out as I spin this around. And only when I decide to unleash the oil will it come out. Okay, so I'm near the end of the threads, and then I can just, at this point, pull it out. Okay, just like so. You can see that really strong stream of oil just shoots right out of the engine. Now with my hand, I'm just gonna wipe it right away with a napkin, just like this, okay? Drain bolts inside, let that oil drain out. Side to side to tell my trouble come alive. I can't wait to sun. 
Okay, so we can see that the stream is becoming pretty fine at this point. So what I like to do now is I like to put the cat the drain bolt back on the oil pan. Okay, back on the drain plug area. Now why do I like to do this? Well, I don't like oil dripping uncontrollably all over the cardboard, all over my floor. And I know what the next step is, which is I need to now remove the oil filter, okay? So what I do is I'll take the drain plug bolt and put it back into the drain plug just to temporarily cease this from dripping all over the place while I work on the oil filter. Okay, so let me just put this back just lightly screw it over okay just to stop the oil for now okay we'll get back to it later and we're going to move on to the oil filter okay the reason for this is the oil filter will have oil inside of it which will essentially just drain right out and we're going to need to reposition the pan just slightly to catch that oil okay now we're going to take a look at the oil filter which is right here okay so this is the oil filter okay here's the drain pan so first I'm gonna see if I can even just undo this by hand. If I can, then great. Okay, but usually they're pretty tight on there. Okay, and that doesn't look like I can just simply screw it off. Now there are some other ways you can use like an anti-slip grip material that can help you to turn this uh, oil filter and screw it off. Or you can use the oil filter wrench. Okay, so let me try to use the oil filter wrench because that's pretty standard. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to undo this oil filter and I'm gonna use the strap oil filter wrench to help me dislodge it. So here is the strap oil filter wrench and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pre-wind it a little bit and what that does is it'll allow me to kind of approximate the circumference of the oil filter so that this thing can get a grip over the oil filter okay so pre-wound it okay and hold on okay like this pre-wound it I'm getting it over the oil filter, slipping it over. Okay, until we're at a point where we have it just like so. Okay, and at this point we can turn the wrench and you see the oil filter is coming undone. Okay, it's coming undone. There we go, see? All right, and actually after we break it loose, we don't need to use this anymore. We can put away the wrench and we can just undo the rest by hand. Drag the oil pan, the drip pan over here. Okay, right under the filter. And we're gonna undo the rest by hand. Okay, if you have a good pair of rubber gloves, that should be grippy enough to allow you to turn this. Okay, now when you undo the oil filter, what is going to happen is the, the residual oil in the filter and around that mounting point is going to drip around this pan area. So make sure you kind of encapsulate it with the pan, okay? Because it will not drip directly from the oil filter position. It will drip kind of in the vicinity area. Okay, but I'm going to unscrew this and we can see it's coming out now. Okay, it's coming out around the oil filter and maybe around it as well. We can just kind of do this and let it drain out, okay? But there will still be oil inside when we take the filter out. Okay, so we're now we're gonna finish unscrewing this. Now, when you do this, it's very, very important to hold the oil filter as you unscrew it, because if you don't, the whole thing can fall into the oil pan and create a huge splash. Okay, so I'm kind of with my hand holding the filter while turning it because that moment it disconnects, it will just kind of drop. Okay, 
Another thing is when it comes out, try to keep it upright because there will be oil inside the oil filter. So don't just let it fall. Okay, there it goes. Okay. Okay, so I'm just kind of letting it drain into the pan here. Okay, next thing to do is just move this oil filter, wipe it up with some paper towels right away. Okay. So, because I'm very talented, I can rotate it like this. Okay, and therefore, and that way the oil inside won't drip out. Okay, you can actually take a look in there. There's still oil inside. Okay, so, what we'll do is we'll pull out the oil pan, let all of this drain into the oil pan, and basically wrap this up and seal it up in a bag. One of the great things about this piece of cardboard is I can pull on it now very gently, and basically the whole oil pan comes out without any issue. And we can take the oil drain, uh, the oil filter, and kind of drain it out. Okay. Okay, another thing I like to do is then to use these paper towels and kind of absorb, uh, clean up whatever I can off of this oil filter. And then actually take the box of the new oil filter, just pop that in there, keep it upright so it doesn't spill out. And basically close it up, seal it up in a plastic bag and get it ready for disposal. Another thing I like to do is I like to get rid of the oil right away at this point that can be particularly advantageous because with this pan filled with oil it can get pretty uh, annoying if I kicked it over if I spilled it all over the place and uh, caused a big mess so right, why don't I just pour the oil, the used oil, into a container so that it doesn't give me a headache later on the oil into the container it's a windy day okay so I don't recommend doing this on a windy day it really screws everything up okay but I got it all over myself okay all over the cardboard which is why we have the cardboard okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pan back under drain out the drain bowl just a little bit more put on the new oil filter and then pour in new oil uh, through the engine cover if you remember we put the drain bolt back on so we're going to take it off and let the leftover drip out. Okay. Here we go. Okay. And you can see over those couple minutes, quite a significant amount had collected in the oil, in the oil pan. Okay, in the meantime, what we can do is we can wipe the area where the oil filter sits. Okay, you're supposed to give this a good cleaning. Okay, so let me just wipe that a little bit. Okay, and we will put on a new oil filter. Just wipe this area here and there, clean it up a little bit. Okay, okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a new oil filter. And we're just gonna screw it on. Here's our new oil filter. And first we're going to just put a little oil on the gasket. 
Okay, we're gonna take some of our Mobile One oil, poke a hole through that. Okay, and then we're going to just take a little dab of that with our finger, okay, and just kind of lubricate that gasket. Okay, make sure it has a little bit of oil so that when it goes on, it's relatively smooth and it will produce a fairly good seal. Okay. All right, we can see there that we got some oil on the gasket. Okay, now we're going to stick the oil filter in its place. Okay, so the way you do it is you get it caught on the threads and you turn it so that the oil filter gasket seats against that mounting uh, point, okay, that aluminum ring of metal. Okay, so just about right there, I start to feel the resistance. Okay, and from this point on, you give it one full turn. And you know, this hole right here on this K&N filter allows us to kind of keep track of that. Okay, so just with your hand, that's about a quarter. That's about a half, okay. And we just hand tighten another quarter or so, maybe a little more, and that's it, okay? So the one thing I like about the K&N filter is it's got this nut that's been welded, or this bolt uh, hexagonal pattern that's been welded onto the end of the filter so that next time we don't have to use the strap filter, we can just use a, a wrench to basically untighten the oil filter. Okay, but I think we're good here. Okay, now we can put the drain bolt back on. It's pretty much stripped to a very, very low rate of oil now. So we'll just put the bolt back on, like so. Okay. Okay, and then we will tighten it with a wrench after I've hand tightened it. Now there's a little gasket on the end of this bolt. It actually isn't a gasket, it's a washer. Okay, but it acts like a gasket. Okay, and because it's a used washer, we're using the original one, it's already been pretty much compressed. Okay, so when we tighten that bolt here, we don't need to tighten it that much. Okay, if you tighten it too much, you could strip the threads on the oil pan and that can be a very, very costly and dangerous mistake. So all you need to do is just twist it just slightly, just give it a little bit of torque with the wrench and it should be good. Okay, so here's our wrench and now we tighten it, which means since we're facing the threaded end and not the top of the bolt, we turn this counterclockwise, just a little bit. Okay, so turn that, feel a little resistance, just a little bit more. And that's it, okay? You do not need to use your body weight. You do not need to use all of your bodybuilding arm strength on this guy, okay? All you need to do is just put it over, put a little bit of hand torque, and that's it, okay? Okay, now that everything is sealed up on the bottom, the oil filter and the drain plug, it's a, going to be a good time to release the jacks, okay? And the reason why I want to do this is when I pour in the new oil, I want the car to be on level ground so I can use the dipstick properly. So let's undo the jacks. So first, we're gonna undo this one. Just stick that there and open up the release valve. Okay, very slowly, very gently. Turn it, okay. Okay, that one's coming down. Okay, re-tighten it and pull the jack out. And we'll do the second jack now. Okay, we'll just open up the release valve very gently on this one. Okay. And the car will just come down. Okay. And we tighten it for safety. And pull the jack. Okay, the car's on level ground now, so let's put our funnel there and start pouring the oil. Now the capacity for this Honda Civic is about four quarts, okay? But maybe around three and a half is going to be good enough because the engine already has oil inside and well, you have to use the dipstick to make sure that we're at the right level. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, give it some more. Okay, at this point we can hold the bottle up, check how much is left. Okay, we only got like maybe two and a half quarts in there. Like one, two, maybe two quarts in there. So keep it going. Check again. Okay, maybe we got three quarts in there. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, let's stop for a second there. Okay, and here's our dipstick. We're gonna pull it out. Take a quick look here. Okay, we have to wipe it down. Okay, after wiping down, we're gonna go ahead and dip it in there again. Okay, all the way to the bottom. Pull it out and then check that the oil level is somewhere in between the hexagonal area. Okay, if you take a look here, it's somewhere near the bottom of the hexagonal area. Okay, you see that? Okay, so we're actually okay here. So I'm gonna top it off just a little bit more and we'll call it a day. Okay, we topped it off. So now we'll just put that aside, put the cap back on. Okay, release the hood. Right there, okay. And now let's try the engine. Okay, now we're going to finally reset the maintenance light indicator. Okay, so we're gonna turn on the engine. Okay. And there is the maintenance light indicator. Okay, we're gonna start the engine. Then we're gonna press and hold the select reset button. So this button over here, we're going to press and hold it. And the service life should start flashing. So I just started pressing it. Okay, there it goes, it starts flashing. So I'm gonna release the button. Okay, and then I'm gonna press and hold it again. One, two, three, four, five. And there it goes, the oil life is reset to 100%. Now I release the button, and we're ready to go. Let me just hit that button, change it back to odometer, and there it is. Now what I like to do at this point is also reset this uh, trip meter so that we start at the beginning of the oil change. So I'll just press and hold this, we set it to zero. And that's it. Don't forget to take it on a test drive and hit like if you like this video. See you next time.